Bob Reynolds? And Chris Potter? What? 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 Hey everybody, Chris G here from Positively Progressing. Thank you so much for tuning in and for your continued watching habits. Gotta take a second, give a quick shout out and big huge thank you to Saxologic. my buddy Nathan over there. Thank you. And an extra big thank you to all you subscribers. As I'm taping this, I haven't hit a thousand subscribers yet, but if I do, you are a part of that. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. That truly means a lot for you guys to really take your time and watch these videos and subscribe. Thank you so much. I'll keep them coming. You guys keep watching and we'll keep having fun. All right. So I hope all is well in quarantine land. I hope you guys are staying safe out there and things are going smoothly. I know we're all getting extra time in the shed, so that's one positive that's coming out of this, right? So while in quarantine, I don't know if all of you have seen this or not or have heard of it, but Snarky Puppy has been putting on master classes like all the time. Every single person in that band is a phenomenal musician and they're putting on master classes. So no matter what instrument you play, something will relate to you that they're putting on. Check out the link below. You'll be able to check out the schedule and you'll also be able to watch any of the replays from the previous classes, including the one I'm gonna to discuss today. Last week, Bob Reynolds and Chris Potter got together and put together a masterclass on how to approach standards. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this one. So the class was broken down into three sections, but at the end of the class, Bob read some questions for Chris to answer about his playing and how he approaches things. And here's one of the questions that was asked. Chris, could you discuss rhythmic development? I'd like to play more rhythmically interesting ideas without them sounding forced or pre-planned. I know you play mm -hmm. drums. Are there any other methods you would recommend to improve my rhythmic concepts and vocabulary? I find it really helpful and I've learned a lot about what I want to sound like and you know, tried to formulate ideas. Um, without the horn in my hands and just sing mm. the ideas, you know, you know, you know, even with that glitch, he kept perfect time. What? Dude, dude. Dude, Chris also went on to mention how Charlie Parker had so much rhythmic clarity when he was improvising, bringing everything together so perfectly. So he didn't end up showing any examples of this on his horn, but that's what this video is about. A bunch of examples of what I think Chris Potter is talking about. Now I am no Chris Potter, nor do I claim to be. I was reflecting on his answer and I thought I could make a pretty good video and describe what I think he was talking about and portray it in a fun way and hopefully you guys learn a bunch from it. So there's going to be a bunch of examples of rhythm, rhythmic development, motivic development, whatever you want to call it in this video and you can grab what you like out of it. If you have some favorite rhythmic players that you'd like to share below, please leave a comment and I'd love to check them out. Before we get started, I want to preface this with try not to get caught up in the notes. Try to really focus on the rhythm and the, what rhythmic stuff is going on here. We're gonna start with one of my favorites, Sonny Rollins, and he's playing Moritat. So speaking of notes, he's only using two notes here, so you can't get caught up on the notes. Check this one out. Here's another one by him, same song. Didn't that sound a lot like cymbal crashes? Let's take another listen. One more from Sonny. Now when you listen to this one, think about snare drum hits. Okay, let's check out Bird and Diz. Here's the break to Groovin' High. Here's the break to Salt Peanuts. Do you hear how singable these rhythms are? Check out Dizzy's solo break and listen to the drummer towards the end of it. It almost sounds like they're playing some kind of rhythm game. So here's a sample of Bob playing on his last vlog. This wasn't even about rhythm. This was just about articulation, but check out how rhythmic his playing is here. Mm -hmm. 
super rhythmic. And like I said, that wasn't even the topic of his vlog. All right, let's check out some of Chris's stuff. So this is gonna be pretty advanced, of course, because it's coming from Chris Potter. In his answer from the session with Bob, he talks about how he's laying down rhythmic ideas and he worries about the notes later, but getting that rhythmic idea in place really helps set him up for success. So these next few examples are from one of my favorite Chris Potter albums, Gratitude. It's where he wrote a bunch of songs for some of the legends that came before us. The first one's from The Source, written for John Coltrane. <laughs> Next one is called The Visitor for Lester Young. The last one's called Sun King. He wrote this one for Sonny Rollins. Check out how much he sounds like a drummer on this one. So let's go back to that very first example of Sonny Rollins playing on Mori Tot or Mac the Knife. So how do we translate this rhythm onto our instruments? First thing I would do that I would suggest doing, I do this a lot, is snapping and singing. Kind of like how Chris Potter does it, but do it with this specific rhythm. This is only four bars long. So check it out. So we're... Babadop, babadop. Babadop, 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 bab. That was it. So I'm not singing the pitches, I'm just getting that rhythmic feel. Hearing these rhythms, feeling these rhythms, you gotta get them into your soul. So the next thing you can do is transcribe that directly, play along with the album or whatever rhythm you choose, or you can put it into a tune you know very well. I would suggest putting it into a blues. Everyone says it, and it's so true. It's the most important thing to know in jazz ever, ever, ever. Start out by playing just one note and making changes as needed. So I'm gonna play the F blues here. I'm gonna start on the third of the one chord. I'm gonna resolve it to the flat seven of the four chord and then go back up to the third of the one chord just to make the changes work. So once that starts feeling good, add another note. This next example is me playing two notes, kind of the same style that Sonny was doing in Moritat. I'm just using the thirds and sevenths of the one chord and the four chord. This video is starting to get really long. If you're still watching, Thank you so much for hanging in there. Now it's time for you all to start exploring. Explore different rhythms. Listen to records that you've listened to over and over and over again and start exploring the rhythms in that record. Just take a four bar clip of something really, really cool. We transcribe notes and melodies all the time, but we sometimes don't realize how important rhythm is in transcribing rhythm. Why not start transcribing rhythms and then make your own melodies to them? Thank you again so much. Almost a thousand subscribers. Much appreciated. You guys are so awesome. Hope you got something out of this. Please feel free to leave a comment below if you want some more examples of some rhythmic development stuff. I'm more than happy to put it out there. Until next time, always positive, always progressing. You guys take care. Later.